Hello! Welcome back to a live Mover Mailbag. Hope you're having a great Sunday. This is kind of impromptu. I was actually just filming... Uh, what's it called? I can't pronounce it. Pat Labor? Pat Labor? Anyway, a lot of people have asked me, I mean, that's almost a Mover Mailbag by itself, about doing uh, Mover Ruins movies about the Pat Labor F-16 intercept scene. So I did, and I just finished filming that, and I'm going to edit it, but I figure while I'm here... I got mail. We didn't do this this week. I was out at Heli Expo, which that video will be out tomorrow. A um, lot of fun at Heli Expo. Pretty cool time. Lester was with me. Um, yeah, so I did a video of that. So uh, got some mail, got some emails. Uh, no one's helping me today. It's just me and you, and I'll answer your questions. And we'll talk about So I put a title up there because I watched the documentary uh 737 max so after we open this we'll talk about that because i thought it was an interesting documentary but anyway so this uh comes this is actually really old so i apologize but this is uh, uh combat contrails william b scott so cool book to read and in vietnam it's got a letter uh it says, Dear Mover, longtime subscriber, I always enjoy your content and appreciate all the hard work must take to produce it. Thank you. My dad is a retired airline pilot who flew the B-52 during the Vietnam War. I always wanted to be a pilot like my dad, but life dealt me type 1 diabetes at age 13. With my dad's help, I learned to fly gliders, no third-class medical required, in exchange for working for at Crystal Soaring in Southern California. After high school, I went vocational, got an A&P license, and a job at Northwest Airlines working on DC-10s. Years later, I obtained a third-class medical waiver and finally soloed powered, soloed powered in a 152. I feel fortunate to have been able to work in aviation as a mechanic and to have had help to take advantage of alternate, alternative routes to learn how to fly with a disability. I'm enclosing a book of Vietnam combat aviator stories put together by William B. Scott, former Aviation Week editor and longtime family friend. He's donating all proceeds from the book sales to show support uh, wounded warriors charity uh, a wounded warriors charity show of support.org i've told bill about your channel and support of folds of honor which is so great hope you two might connect for an interview somehow all the best and thank you for your service clay well thank you clay that is awesome i appreciate it so uh what do we got here i'm from germany i'm from danbury hello from charleston uh do you like plastic model kits uh, i don't build anything I've had people even ask me if I would build an airplane or a helicopter or something, and the answer is Mover does not build. Mover is not a builder. So, um, anyway, let's talk about the Max thing, because uh, this has been asked before. I flew the Max back um, when it first came out. I flew the Max when it first came online, and then um, I stopped flying it, obviously, when it was grounded, and then COVID happened, and I stopped flying altogether because I went on a leave of absence, and people have asked, what's going on with the airline thing, and that's what's going on. I'm still on leave of absence, uh, and that'll go for at least another year, maybe more. Uh, it's a personal leave of absence, so I get to keep my seniority, thankfully, uh, but I'm not getting paid or anything. It's just I'm on, I'm on a leave of absence. So, um, yeah, so the 737 MAX, if I remember right, uh, it was an iPad training course on the differences. I don't think we did a sim um, initially. I think it was just the iPad training course. I might have, we might have talked about it in my recurrent training, but I don't remember if we did a sim or not because it seems like they did the sims after all the Lion Air stuff happened. So I flew it. Um, I do remember the first time I flew it, both my captain and I, it was the first time. And I remember laughing because my captain showed up a little late. I'd already set up all the cockpit and stuff. And he's like, okay, what's this switch do? And I'm like, hold on a second. I went and shut the door because I didn't want the passengers hearing as we fumbled through it. it takes a little bit longer to start than a normal uh, 737. And there wasn't much difference. We didn't know anything about uh, MCAS. That wasn't a thing that, that we knew about. So watching the documentary, um, I thought it was fairly well done. I thought it was a cool, cool show. Um, it went over, if you watch it, it's on Netflix. They talk about uh, the Lion Air crash. They really kind of anchor down on that. But they don't go into a lot of detail on the flights themselves or the causes and stuff. And I think that's intentional because I think it is kind of a damning documentary on Boeing, which deserves every bit of, of what happened. You know, I said this on the Max video I did a long time ago. 
Boeing, from what I understand and from what I've heard from talking to people and stuff and just historically, uh, somebody once put said that uh, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas bought Boeing using Boeing's money, you know, because they merged. Boeing was the stronger company. They, they took over, but then McDonnell Douglas put their CEO in charge, and then they put their co corporate culture in, in charge, which, you know, Boeing was a company of engineers and quality assurance, and McDonnell Douglas was more of a company of accountants, and that's why they ended up moving to Chicago, and uh, I think they lost a bit of step. I mean, honestly, my opinion has always been, as long as I've flown it, that the 737 is outdated. I mean, if you look at it, it's a 707 cockpit that it just it's long in the tooth and they should have been doing clean sheet designs earlier so that they didn't get behind but the documentary actually talks about that and kind of talks about how boeing fell and their race against airbus and how the max came about and so i agreed with that i thought that was cool um it was really tragic the way they presented the Lion Air stuff. But then they talk about the Ethiopian thing. And I, I didn't pay as much attention on the Lion Air crash stuff because it's just, you know, it, no one knew that this was going to happen, right? Like, the Lion Air guys were completely surprised by this. The Ethiopian guys knew about it and knew enough to flip off the stab. And in fact, there's two uh, APA guys, Dan Carey and uh, Tajer, Dennis Tajer that are to talk about that and how the guy flipped them off. But then they stop and they don't talk about the fact that they flipped them back on. And they don't talk about the fact they show it. They show that the guy, the, the aircraft was doing 300 plus knots into the barber poles, you know, the red line into the ground because they left it in takeoff power. No one ever stopped to think we got to throttle this thing back. And so, yes, it is more difficult to trim at high speed. But no one ever thought to pull the speed brakes out because the speed brakes on the 737 Max, that's another difference. They're electric. Did they give you like, I almost knocked the captain into the center console. He was coming back from a bathroom break and I was, we were descending. So I had to use some speed brakes and I'm like, holy crap. You know, it gives you a lot more than the traditional NG, like instant, like they're like an off on switch almost. And so, um, they don't talk about that. And I think, Yes, you're, you know, you can, you can tell that kind of draws a slant to it because, yes, you're trying to make it as look as bad as possible for Boeing, which, I, again, I agree, they deserve everything they get. But some of that was pilot error. Like, the speeds, the, you know, hey, let's leave it off, let's manually trim. Well, it's hard to trim. Well, of course, you know, you're going to have to manhandle a little bit, but you're also going to have to manually trim when it's slower. You can't at 300 knots, you know, it's, anything's going to be tough to do. So, um, but again, they didn't have any training, you know, and they didn't have because the practice, because actually eventually on one of my recurrent trainings, we did go and practice this and it, it's difficult, but it's not impossible if you know what to expect. So uh, eventually they did end up doing like a whole two day course for the max transition or two sim course or something like that. So everybody did it. I didn't because by that point I was transitioning to the, uh, where I was supposed to transition to the 7576, and then COVID happened, and we don't have those anymore. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, that's it. So I flew the 737 uh, NG800, uh, and then the MAX, and then that's it. So let's look at what you guys are talking about uh, from the beginning so I don't get caught up uh, on that. See what you guys say about all this stuff. Uh, The doc didn't talk much about how the loose FAA oversight is a dog here. Yeah. Uh, might've contributed to MCAS slipping through the cracks. I wonder if that was necessary to get all the government help in production. Yeah. That, that's curious too. Um, it's curious that the FAA wasn't more involved, but again, you know, not pointing any fingers, but there were certain airlines that relied on the fact that they couldn't do any more training and they didn't want a separate type rating. Uh, and those airlines predominantly only flew 737s and they, drove the fight on common type rating and extending this versus a, a new aircraft, I think. Um, Lion is a terrible airline, deserves its own dock, probably. Yeah. Uh, was your call sign mover? Yes. I don't, you don't name yourself. That's not something you do. It's not cool. Is it true that MCAS is not about stability, anti-stall, was only about keeping the handling characteristics within the threshold they can maintain a common type. I don't know that that's true. I know, you know, from the documentary and from what I, I've heard, it's more about um, 
they didn't want to add more systems to it. They didn't want to, uh, because of where the engines are, um, it changes the handling, handling characteristics and the stall characteristics, and it got to the point where, you know, they needed to, to keep it. But I don't think MCAS was even necessary. I mean, do you, I mean, I know you're, you're selling it to the lowest common denominator, but you stall the aircraft, you push forward. It's not that common. You don't need help. You know, you don't need the aircraft to auto trim itself. You can just push forward. I mean, what happened to just being a pilot? Uh, do Boeing immediately blame the line pilots after it went down? Just finesse other airlines to get them to buy more Maxes? Yeah, I mean, according to the documentary, yeah. Uh, let's see. What are the CF-18 differences from the American counterparts? Uh, Google. You can Google it. There's a lot of, I mean, so, they're not major differences, but um, you can Google it because I don't know a whole lot about the Canadians. Um, the lack of type training. It's not that you need type training. It's that it would have been better to at least have some training, you know, some like, hey, go sit in the sim. Here's the difference. Because, I mean, it's the the screens are bigger. You know, there's a lot of systems difference. The startup procedures are different. Uh, the whole startup thing is just massively, it takes a lot longer. The, the leap engines just take a, a while, especially uh, if they were hot, right? They took a minute. Uh, let's see. Ninja Rod says, oh my God, I made a ride alive. Welcome. Let's see. I think what shocked me the most in the documentary was the whole assembly line segment. Like, how do they let someone leave a ladder in the plane? That's absurd. Uh, me too. Like, I thought that whole thing was disappointing, especially when you've got employees talking about how, you know, for 30 years it was a culture of, um, you know, hey, let's not cut corners and stuff. Now, granted, these are people with access to grind, so they're going to say, you know, the worst possible thing, but... There's some truth to it, and there's, you know, I'm sure before they were about profits, too. I mean, no company's ever been, oh, well, we just quality over. I mean, they, they wanted to make money before, too. I do believe that, you know, some of the focus shifted, but uh, it, it is, some of the stuff was definitely eye-opening. Uh, Boeing was once labeled too big to fail. Is that really a thing, or is Boeing on a declining path, given their, I don't think they're declining anymore. Um, I think they're... I think they're on an upward trajectory. They're still getting military contracts. They're still selling aircraft. You know, the max thing is kind of was overcome by events with COVID. I mean, COVID, I think, saved it, right? Because they grounded all these aircraft for 20 months, but travel declined. A lot of aircraft, a lot of airlines consolidated fleets. So, yeah. Keep the Hellcat. Man, I don't know. I don't know. The problem with whether I get rid of it or keep it is there's nothing to replace it right now. You can't buy anything. Like I was looking at Tahoe's. I mean, this is how silly it is. You know, what, what is parking assist and uh, heated steering wheel, right? It's probably like a thousand dollar option. Well, GM's not putting them on the vehicles anymore for the chip shortage, but you're only getting a hundred bucks back. Like it's $25 per feature. That's not on there. You get a credit when you really, if you had to buy it extra, which I think is kind of silly. Let's see. Did you get scolded? No, you don't get scolded as an airline pilot, man. What? No. Do Boeing really want to compete with Airbus 320 Neo? Do you think Airbus overtook Boeing in the short to medium range airliner market? I mean, that's what the documentary said. Whether that's true, I don't know. I don't have the data on that. There was a certain 60 minutes hit piece or... Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you could tell they were trying to make a point like it wasn't about here's the truth behind it it was here's how crappy boeing was with this certain situation which again some of it's true some of it's you know just hyperbole just to make their point have you thought about jumping on the air force e11 rotations no hello to north carolina the best program well thanks lewis appreciate it would it be possible for me to find the Spectre Rising at Barnes & Noble? Online only. All my paperback and, and e-books are on, online only. No stores carry it. Friends don't let friends buy Chrysler products. Well, yeah. Gonky is a big Mopar fan. I think the 797 would have been a better answer for Boeing. How significant do you think the 7... I don't... I mean, have they... Has it actually come out yet? I think the 75 would have been perfect for what the Max does, but... 
they didn't, uh, they, they got rid of that. Have you seen the new Jeep Cherokee? Uh, it's too small. It's even smaller than the Durango. Durango is small. Cherokee's even smaller. I tried to get in the back of one to see how much room the dogs would have, and it's just, it's not. Uh, yeah. I uh, love your videos from England Fly. The Eurofighter got four years left. Probably go airlines. Well, that's awesome. Eurofighter is a great aircraft. Um, and that's really cool. I've got a buddy that's doing an exchange tour flying the Eurofighter. Flew the Raptor first. Why many of the ejection, ejected Russian pilots had a nosebleed? Is their ejection seat or they got beaten? Probably a mix. Probably a mix of both. Sometimes expensive. I had the privilege of driving a 737 sim using airline loyalty points. Really? It was like 100,000 points for a two-hour sim session, like a first-class ticket. Yeah, they are expensive. What about a new Bronco? They're too small, too. I mean, we're talking, for what I want to do, uh, you're, you're talking Tahoe, Escalade, Yukon. I mean, I really like them. It's just I don't like the way GM puts features in vehicles. Like, I think the looks of the Tahoe Z71 with a 6.2 engine, but the interior features of the Escalade would be about right. But the Escalade, you can't get that because they're 30, 40,000 over MSRP. Have I looked at a Wagoneer? Uh, I'm not doing any more products from whatever they are. What's the best book? Um, I think Finney Flight is the best, personally. But it's best to read them in order. What are your thoughts on the whole Polish Air Force MiG-29 situation? So... I personally don't like the idea of giving any country our jets unless we're replacing them with new jets because we don't have enough jets as it is. We have, I, I think we need to keep everything we have. So unless we're giving them stuff that's off the showroom floor from Lockheed, which I don't know that they have the allocations to do that, I personally am not a fan of giving away aircraft to any other country. I don't have any thoughts on MH370 still missing. As bad as the situation in Ukraine is, do you military guys get together to share your constructive criticism of Russian army? No. I mean, we'll talk about it, but no. You never want to underestimate your enemy. Would you do cheap Star Wars type film techniques for Spectre series movies like building a mock-up cockpit for a fighter jet in front of a green skin in your garage? Nope. Absolutely not. Former Highway Patrol Tahoe. Yeah, only if it's like a 21 or 22. The 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 transmissions, that eight-speed transmission is garbage. I had one in the Tahoe, or sorry, the Yukon. I don't trust that transmission after about 60,000 miles. Uh, I would The 10-speed, yes. The 6-speed, maybe. But the 8-speed that GM did was not a good transmission. How do the views compare situational awareness-wise out of the Hornet and the Viper? Which one is better to fly? I mean, the Viper's got better visibility, but situational awareness, they're about the same. It's all about the systems and stuff. Uh, just thinking, a little over two and a half weeks, uh, this guy, me, will enthusiastically sit in the backseat of a DCS aircraft. Is it two weeks? It's always two weeks. But it's less than that. Would you become a Leo helicopter pilot if the opportunity became available? Yes. But that opportunity probably won't become available, at least around the local area. Do you think Boeing's military division has a better track record than civilian division? Or same? You know, the KC-46 didn't have a great track record either, so I, I'd say no. Um, do you think we have a really advanced secret jet? Um Probably. Maybe. I don't know. I think there's a lot that we don't know. Just curious. When operating from X Air Force Base near various aircraft present, especially more secretive ones like the F-22, would all squadrons achieve themselves? I, I mean, I don't know what that means. You, so you can't talk about classified stuff unless you're in a vault. We operate together, but, I mean, for the most part, you train in your squadron. Sometimes you'll do joint stuff, but, um, Yeah. Have you heard of the ghost of U Ukraine? Go watch the video that, um, what's his nuts? Uh, Wombat and I did. Eagle Dynamics says the H-64 will be released on March 31st. I think I'm more excited if they ever do the, and this is going to sound nerdy, 
the Vulcan slash multi-core mod because I'm I would look forward to some better performance with VR with my 3090 and my um, 11.9K processor. That's me. I flew in the Max 8 one week before they were grounded. Beautiful plane, terrible would happen. Yeah. I read on Wiki. Oh boy, I have not read the Wikipedia in a while. We'll see what it says. That you dogfight against F-22 with T-38. What say you about this experience? I, I mean, we don't dogfight. It's training. You know, I mean, it's we, we are training aids for them. So they're scripted setups. Um, obviously, the T-38 cannot do anything against an F-22. Um, but... No. Many things, but lack of a second AOA sensor with MCAS hidden to avoid training, so no easy shut off, just crazy. Lack of training right behind. Yeah, I agree. I agree. They should have just made a new aircraft, personally. The 737, the overhead panel, the circuit breakers behind you. It's just outdated. Should be one button to push, just like the Airbus. Drove me nuts. From experience, all three divisions of Boeing are a mess. I don't doubt that whatsoever. Uh, what do you think about the AN-225? Uh, so I'm more sad about people dying. However, you know, as an aviation enthusiast, it sucks, but I think they can rebuild it. Isn't there another shell somewhere? I mean, it wasn't really the Ukrainian aircraft. It was a Russian aircraft that just after the fall was in Ukraine. But um, yeah, no chief donut maker for you. Yeah, I don't think I was cut out for that. I am a road. I'm a GM homer. You know, I'm about the Corvette and the Camaro and the Tahoe and like, that's my kind of thing. Maybe a Mustang, but Mopar and I just haven't gotten along. 787 versus A350. Which would you prefer to fly? I would like the tray table. So I'd go with the A350. We definitely don't want to go against Russia, even though I don't worry too much about the MIG. We come up against them in the North Sea and have some fun exchange. I, you just don't, you don't want to go against anybody, you know. I mean, I think it's it's just not something you want, especially with mutually assured destruction and tactical nukes and ICBMs and nukes and stuff. You don't, you just don't want to do that. And I think the Chinese are watching what's going on in the Taiwan Strait and Taiwan. You know, that could be another hot spot, and it's just not a good situation. We don't want to be in that situation. I think it. I think it's not. No one should be hoping for war. Um, I, I just I think it's something we should want to avoid. I like what's his nuts better as a handle than Wombat. I don't know where Wombat, I think he said he had a birthday party. I didn't tell him I was doing this. He might have been able to, to show up. In fact, he might show up in the chat and say, hey, uh, but I don't have the, the way. Uh, yes, I've done a video on the Su-57 and Su-75. Toyota coming out with a new Sequoia SUV. You know what impressed me about Toyota for the whole time I was waiting for my Hellcat to be fixed? I had a Toyota 4Runner, and it was like the lowest model. And what impressed me about Toyota is that thing had adaptive cruise control, which that's what aggravates me about GM, is that Tahoe Z71 does not, which it's a $70,000 SUV that doesn't even have adaptive cruise control. The, the 4Runner had that. It had CarPlay, like... It had all the basic safety features. You're like, why does GM make you buy a pawpaw version of the high, the high country with all the stupid chrome when I just want this stuff in something that looks like a Tahoe? Tips on the approach to learning an aircraft and starting DCS. Um, so my technique is just to hop in and see what's what. But if you're actually trying to take it seriously, read the manual. That's really, read the manual. What are your dream planes to fly in both airliner and military space? I mean, the Tomcat, I'd fly the Raptor uh, A-10, especially in combat. Um, Airwolf, does it have to be real? No, Airwolf, for sure. Um, I have no dream airliners to fly because I have no dreams of flying airliners. There's not, there's just, there's nothing like, eh. um, Flying airliners is for money. That's what that's for. Um, be cool to fly B1. That'd be fun. But that's about it. How much of aerobatics is looking at the AOA gauge? Uh, 
I mean, once you feel the aircraft, you can kind of correlate the two, but yeah, AOA is important. When I did aerobatics in the pits, I didn't use it at all. I don't think you even had an AOA gauge, but in the T-38, you use it. In fighters, you look at your AOA. F-18, for sure, you're always looking at the AOA gauge. F-16, not as much, because the AOA gauge was down, down low. Uh, Antonov is Ukrainian. Okay, stand corrected. I thought that was a Russian... Uh, was it during the Soviet bloc when the Ukrainians were in Russia? Were part of the Soviet Union? Mover, did you see the videos of the Ukrainian Mi-24s attacking Russian troops in Ukraine? No, but I did see the one of the man pad hitting the uh, hind, and that was a from the drone, and that was a very interesting video. Toyota Sequoia would be the ticket. As far as Boeing goes, they're crapping the bed when it comes to space. Starliner and SLS so far behind, they might never fly. Yeah, well, Elon's got it covered, so don't worry. Yes, there's a partially complete AN-225. Yep, that's the one I was thinking of, so I think they can use that. Um, Bob says, sorry about the Tahoe. Wish I could do something. By the way, loss of neon production in Ukraine may make the chip shortage worse. Oh, God, really? Jesus. Oh, man. Boeing is getting too comfortable, arrogant. Max KC forty six. What's next? I don't know. I, I think, I think we've gotten lazy. You know, you need more clean sheet designs. Your thoughts of a squadron of A tens handling that earlier thirty mile column? Uh, if you go, so guys, go check out the Afterburn Afterburn pop, podcast. Uh, Afterburner Afterburn Afterburn podcast. Rain's channel. He's got a guest on there who talks about a no-fly zone and a Belarus Sam hitting a 150-mile shot over, over uh, Kiev. That's what you need to be looking at because it's not a survivable environment for an A-10 unless you've got some kind of offensive counter air and seed support. So, yeah, it'd be cool, and uh, Apaches would be cool too, but you need to take down the surface-to-air missile threat, and you need to take down any fighter threat as well. Uh Let's see. I hope all is well. Just wondering if you ever... Oh, let's see if, if I can find this actual... Oh, I'm behind. Okay, I'm behind as usual. Hope all is well. Just wondering if you ever talk to anyone who flies Wild Weasel missions. If so, are they as funny as their arm patch suggests? Uh, Deuce. Deuce did Wild Weasel, and so did Rain. Uh, and they both were very entertaining. But go to Rain's channel, Afterburn Podcast. Um, yeah. Let's see what else. Any new aircraft coming out which you were excited to see? Mm, I mean, you got the MH-139 helicopter, military side. That's cool. Um, it's a AW-139, so Leonardo helicopters. Leonardo makes some good stuff. Um, you know, the Gen 6 fighter would be cool, you know, once we see what it actually is going to be. But quick look at NASCAR, four fat Amy's. Yeah, it was a, it was a Phoenix race, so that makes sense. Does Wombat have a Mustang? He has the Mustangiest Mustang of all Mustangs. I hope he's watching right now. Move over to GMC, the Yukon AT4. Same problem. Doesn't have adaptive. It's the exact same problem. Uh, I like the AT4, and I had a G... My, so, probably the longest tenured vehicle I had was the Yukon that I traded in for this, and I had that thing for four years. The transmission was my only complaint. I was a little worried that as we started hitting 50, 60,000 miles that it was going to start giving me problems. But were it not for that, I mean, I would still be happy driving it today because I was such a good vehicle, had so much room. And now that they have independent rear suspension, I think like they're doing it right. I just wish it had all the features without having to go super high end. Uh, let's see here. Uh, have you finished flying fighter jets for the military? Probably. I'm not going to say yes, but probably. Civilian side, I hope not. I hope there's some opportunities here. I know you had a good deal go bad with the Sierra AT4. Yeah, I'm glad that didn't work out. Although, diesel's the same price as um, petrol, 93 octane. However, comma, less room for dogs. And that's really what it all that matters. They have a dog mode, but they don't have enough room for dogs. The Teslas are small. I need a big SUV. I got three big dogs. I got 200 pounds worth of doggos. Will the A10 ever be upgraded? The A10 is constantly being upgraded. The A10 is upgraded. I mean, have you seen an A10 lately? They're completely upgraded. Thanks, Josh, for subscribing. 
Appreciate that. I think we're getting close to 350,000. Do you think the U.S. and its allies will intervene if China attacks Taiwan? I really hope we don't. You talk about a chip shortage now. If China takes Taiwan, they will own chip manufacturing and chip production. That is a huge problem. And that's why I tell people, you know, TikTok is cancer. Stay away from TikTok. You're just supporting the Chinese and therefore I'm supporting the Russians. Like, the, the Chinese are not our friends. So... Stay off of TikTok. Seems to me that if you cut corners to increase profits and then have crashes that destroy your credibility and reputation and ground planes for years, it ends up costing you money. That's the age-old tale, and, you know, people that wear suits often forget that lesson. Doesn't want to say it, but he really wants to fly the F-35. I would. I would fly the F-35. Fat Amy is not the prettiest girl, but... You know, I'd do it. Mover, do you still want to buy a truck after that fallout with the dealer a couple years ago? No. Mm -mm. Do you think tilt rotors replace helicopters in the future? Not, not, I, not tilt rotors. I think what's eventually is the quadcopter concept seems to be the VTOL. Explorer is even smaller than the Durango. Can you do a video on Wombat Shelby? Whew, I don't know if he ever drives that thing. Maybe. I have to pull his teeth. To, uh, now I really hope he's watching. I have to pull his teeth to get him, get, him, uh, get him to drive it. Although, he may not keep it for much longer. We'll see. Would you ever consider flying air shows? Yes. On one condition. I get a trailer or an RV and bring the dogs with me. I think that'd be cool. Uh, if you had the opportunity, would you have flown with either the Thunderbirds or the Blue Angels? Yeah, probably. I'd rather, like, like if they were like, hey, you can do whatever you want, I'd rather do, like, a, like what Rain did. Like a Viper demo, something like that. But, you know, I, I would have. It would have been cool. I mean, look at all the Thunderbird pilots. They all end up, you know, having very successful careers. Why is this thing having trouble focusing? Am I moving too much? The Halo hit with a man pad was a KA-52. The one on the video from the drone? I don't know. Bunch of American chauvinists. I'm not sure what that refers to. I didn't say anything that was chauvinistic. Air combat equals team effort. Absolutely. How's Luna doing? She's great. We just got back from a run. She's, a, she's an awesome pupper. More collective. Yeah, right? I've got... So, I know you guys don't like video game videos, but I've got the Microsoft Flight Sim H145 I was going to do a review on this week sometime, and also the UH60. In fact, if you guys twitch.tv slash movercwl, um, I started streaming again last night. I'll probably stream again tonight around 7.30 Central Time, which is 8.30 Eastern Time, um, which is doing the uh 60 i think raymond will be there doug will be there uh yeah ever come to oh take me flying that'd be awesome dude especially in the Eurofighter. fighter fire pilots ever carry sidearms yes the beretta i know why this camera's struggling so much let's see What is your opinion on the MiG-21? It's old. I mean, it's capable in some ways, but it's old. Price of gas is $4.19 for regular. I paid $4.94 yesterday for the vet. Have G's affected your health? No. Probably, I mean, other than neck and back issues. So I guess yes. <laughs> I guess flying the F-35 is fine. You don't have to look at her when inside the cockpit. I mean, it's a fighter. I mean, it's better than nothing. I would like to see you take Margot Robbie up in an F-16. Boy, me too. Me too. 
Do you see new jet, jet being built, or do you think drones the way forward? I think you'll see new jets. Um, I think you'll see new jets. Would you be a motor cop for your reserve police gig? That'd be funny. Uh, Neil and I have talked about it, so we could reenact chips. You know, dun, 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 dun. but um, I don't know. That's a tough course. And also, I haven't ridden a motorcycle in 10 years. No, 12 years. I haven't ridden a motorcycle in 12 years. Been a minute. Thought about getting one now the gas prices are what they are. Um, bring back GTA police videos. Yep, we'll live stream that too because I found 5PD, uh, which is a way to do multiplayer. So I can either be the bad guy or the good guy. And uh, I can live stream that. So, person asking about the A10s having a war fantasy is an American chauvinist. Okay. Why there's only an Air Force Academy in Colorado? I don't know. Going to use commercial Hilo license? No. Mover is a social justice warrior. Sad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is a first. Um... Have you flown, trained, or interacted with the Pakistanis? <clears throat> no, but I've interacted with the Pakistanis. Here we go. Let's see. Do you prefer AI pilot in the future? Come on. Of course I'd rather human pilot. Mover ruins chips? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole... Because, you know, I'm not just a one-dimensional person. I, I'm a cop and an author. So, I mean, I guess theoretically I could ruin movies... With those things too. I don't. I think you guys are going to be disappointed about the Pat Labor, Pat Plat Labor, Pat Pat Labor, because like it wasn't that funny. So I mean, if you're only looking at Mover Ruins movies that they have to be funny, this one wasn't funny. It was more factual. Ooh, that's a good question. I always wanted to be Ponch, but as I get older, I'm more of a John. Five PD is awesome. That is true. Could you move, make a video about the B two stealth bomber pilot training? I don't know anything about it. I mean, I could find somebody and then ask them. Same mover being called Nest J Jumpy is one of the most absurd things I've ever seen. Yeah. It takes all kinds, man. I get everything. Um, I don't know what it is with fighter jocks and motorcycles, so you can shake your fist at jets, of course. I started riding in in Luke when I was in F-16 school, and it was because my buddy, Deuce, was a motorcycle guy, and I was like, huh. And then they offered a free class to learn how to ride, so I learned and then bought one. And then kept it until I moved to Miami, and the Miami drivers tried to kill me, and then I sold it and got a convertible. Over, check out Tiny Combat Arena. It's a modern take on the 90s flight sims. Hmm. Okay. Over, gonna shoot his SJW Fox 2s. Why'd you get a Hilo CPL if you aren't gonna use it? Because I had the hours to do it, and it's, an, it's the same check ride as a private. But also, um, with some of the YouTube stuff that I was gonna do, or wanna do, and still am going to do, uh, I didn't want to get into any kind of gray area with who pays for what flight and stuff, you know, and it's just easier if it's clean and I'm a commercial pilot. I was not a Harley guy. I had a Suzuki 650. Um, if you were a SJW, what would be your war screech? I don't know. It's a good question. Are you able to talk about RWR sounds? No. Just become Batman. You know, the problem is I'm lacking the billions of dollars required for that. Like, I'd have to I'd have to be Elon Musk and then be the Batman, which is disappointing about Elon Musk that he's not Batman or any of the other ones. GB has the best jet in the world. What do you think? Are we talking about GB from the channel or Great Britain? Because he GB flies like T-45s or something. He did fly Fat Amy. Have you ever flown an F-22? 
No. Would you like to? Yes. Um, mover, don't eat at La Madeline on mere veterans. Noted. I try to stay on this side of the lake as much as possible. When will, Wom when will Wombat and you ruin Flight of the Intruder? As soon as he has time. He's a busy man. He's doing all kinds of stuff. Thanks for reminding that the customer airlines drove training and the type rating decisions. Not directly their fault, but someone has got to get in there and say this plane is just too old. And I, yeah, it's all about money. I mean, it's all about keeping training costs down. It's about the bottom line. I think the 737 personally, you know, I got frustrated flying the damn thing because it's too small. The cockpit is too small. Like it's outdated. Like why am I switching bleeds on and off? Like what? What am I doing all this stuff for? This guy really wants to know about Pakistani versus Indian pilots, and I'm not going to say anything because it's going to create this in the comment section like 10 times. Plus, I don't have an opinion. That's really why I'm not going to say anything. Hoover, have you ever been up to Claiborne Range before? Yes, but not on the ground. I've dropped there before. Thoughts on the B-52? I wouldn't want to fly it, but it sounds great. Would you ever ruin any of the Dirty Harry movies? You know, that's one of those things like, can you ruin a Dirty Harry movie? You know, I mean, airplane movies are easy because they're usually so wrong, but cop movies are tougher because it's Dirty Harry, you know? I mean, he's a badass. That's the whole point. Best airframe you have ever flown? Oh, man. It's always your first love. Viper was a great aircraft. What do you see the Air Force pilot training looking like in the future? I think it's going to be more VR and more sims, and I think that's unfortunate because I don't think anything replaces seat time. I think you can add to it with VR, but I don't think you can replace it with VR. I think you need to sit in the seat as much as possible, but with budget cuts and stuff, who knows what's going to happen. Mover, what's your thoughts on the EX being purchased from more than fifth gen jets due to the amount of money needed i i agree with that like i think you need a fleet of workhorses for like day 10 of the war and then you need a fleet for the first couple days of the war right because you don't always need stealth like once the air defenses are down and now you're just doing strike missions and you're doing some offensive counter air and defensive counter air stuff you don't necessarily need stealth you need a lot of missiles and a lot of bombs so i think that's i think it's good because more jets are better Especially if they're getting more hours, because then they're better trained and blah, blah, blah. Um, what ammo do you carry in your STI 2011? Uh, 2011. I think that's what you said you had some time ago. Yeah, it's it, uh, Fiocchi. Fiocchi is what it runs the best. Any of the high-speed 9 mil is what it runs best. Anything remanufactured, it kind of struggles with. It'll stovepipe, but if you run some high-quality stuff, it, it really runs well. Suzuki SV650. Yep, that's exactly what I had. Mine had ABS. That was the big selling point. Would Mover ever build his own jet if he had got the opportunity? No. I'd watch somebody build it, but I would not physically build it myself. Have you done any of the tutorials in DCS? No. I tried the one with, um, you know, the F-18. How do you know he's not Batman? Because there is no Batman. That's how I know. A lot of crime out in where is he now? Austin. Let's see what else we got in here. What do you think of Ace Combat when doing your reactions? It's a video game. I mean, it's an arcade game with a cheesy storyline. Has Mover gave joining Ukraine in the war? I have not given them in the war. No. Uh. Elon Musk needs to stop making lithium-ion batteries. Those things are dangerous. Okay. Donkey. Okay. All system has its fault. Not only Max, but A322. I just think Airbus is more friendly with media. Airbus is more pilot-friendly, too. Have you ever been in the cockpit of an Airbus? Is Langley a bad pilot assignment? No. 
I mean, I think it's kind of airspace is not the best. It's only got one runway, and it's right next to you know ACC, so it's a headquarters base. But other than that, I don't think so. Saab, Gripen, or the F-35? Depends on what you're trying to do. You know, if if you're just homeland defense, the Gripen's probably a more cost-effective thing. But if you're, you know, need stealth, need fifth gen, then obviously the F-35 is where you go. A320 accents, some of them contribute to its complicated automation. Yeah, control laws. I mean, it happens. Uh, let's see here. What do you see that... Didn't I answer that already? Yeah, I did. I must be far behind. Two days ago, your book arrived. Cool. Yeah, I must be... Uh... Would you mind being in a sub? Yes. I have no desire to be in underwater. Would you buy a Bell 22, 222 and paint it like Airwolf? Sure. Do you have any money to let me borrow? Because that's part of the problem. I have to start a Patreon. Mover, I live in southwest Florida. I keep seeing Eds flying around in my corner of the Gulf. Do they have fighter escort? What is an Ed? I don't know what an Ed is, so... Hey, Mover, would you fly the LC-130 ski board? I'd fly anything once. Um... Ever thought about interviewing an RCAF pilot? Sure. I'd do that. How are you supposed to get seat time with our 9% FMC rate? Is that the Raptor? Surely the EX is not that bad. If Trump was president, you'd still have your job. I don't think so. I think this is more of an Air Force Reserve level decision and basing. I don't think this was... Has had that. Uh, Fiocchi 124 grain. I'd have to look. I don't remember what the grains. That sounds right. It's a higher grain uh, bullet. Mover is trying to be like that guy on Jag. Harmon Rab? Yeah. Except I wouldn't be a lawyer, though. Fiocchi ammo is made in Missouri. Did not know that, but it is good. I'm, I'm a big fan of Fiocchi, for sure. Like It's my favorite ammo. That's not a sponsorship. It's just, I like it. Any chance you'd ruin Red Flag with Barry Boswick? I could do that. I could put that on the list. I've got a short clip of the F-16s versus um, Blue Thunder next, after the Japanese cartoon I just did. And, um, yeah. What's your opinion on Starship from SpaceX? I think it's cool. Love to fly it. Hit me up, Elon. Uh, how often do you pick up reserve shifts? Right now, I'm trying to Finish the FTO, believe it or not. I've been doing this for a long time, and I just got to resume the program. So now it's probably a couple times a week, three times a week, four times a week. Not four times a week. Probably two to three times a week is what I'm what I'm shooting for. Whether that happens, I don't know. Uh, I ruined the IMAX red flag, not that one. How effective, ineffective would a really good DCS player be in a real jet? I think it would be overwhelming for a real, for a DCS player in a real jet. I think it's one thing to do it in the comfort of your office, living room, whatever, in your underwear with your Cheeto stains, but it's totally different when you put on G suit, harness, survival gear, mask, and you actually start to feel all the stuff that goes on. Like, I think there's a l big difference. So. Would they have a basic understanding? Yes. But I don't think it would go as well as they think. That's why we do all this training. You can't just go from sim to jet and expect to do well. Have you thought of growing a beard? Yeah, every time I grow a beard, I have to shave it for something. Like the law enforcement thing makes me shave. The airlines make me shave. The military makes me shave. So otherwise, I would have a beard. Uh, C300 blackout. I do I have a DDM4 ISR. Uh, sure, I can. 5PD footage? I absolutely can. Yeah, no problem. What was the best way to support you by buying one of your books? Amazon. T 
Tell your red air viper dudes at Nellis to stop bullying my strike eagle. I tried to get a job flying red air at Nellis, but they weren't hiring. Mover, do you have a dream helo to fly, Airwolf? Next question. Or the Apache. I'd wear a panty on my head to fly the Apache. I spent 11 years at Langley. Sure, it has own, it's one runway, but Langley had several airfields nearby. Yeah. How was Heli Expo? Video out tomorrow. Fun times. It's the crappy part, though, with the camera. So I just got a GoPro 10 Black because I couldn't bring a camera person. So I was like, hmm, let me try this out because it's good in low light. It was terrible in low light. I think I have to go to 60 frames per second to get it to work right. I was at 30, and there's a lot of jittering. So my apologies in advance if the quality is not the greatest. Hi again. I met E4B. Ooh, I don't know. And if I did, I probably wouldn't talk about it on here. You guys saw the Su-34 is down by a stinger. Pilot says he doesn't know why he's there. I mean, I believe that, that they don't know why they're there. It's probably why they're doing so poorly. Have you had a chance to look at the T-7 Red Hawks yet? I have not been up close and personal with one, no. Should definitely do more young mover vids. Love your flight training video from when you were younger. Yeah, I had one. I love the comments because that video is somehow taking off. And the comments, some of them don't realize what like the end result was. So they're like, yeah, you know, it's too bad that, you know, your vision sucked and you couldn't become a fighter pilot. Seems like you'd have been good. Or one of them was like, one guy, you know, he's like, uh, yeah, uh, the guy was just sandbagging. Don't, uh, don't flatter yourself. And it's like, okay, well, I've flown two different fighters in the real life, so I, I'm not flattering myself anymore. Thanks, though. As a pilot, would you fix the current maintainer? How would you fix the current maintainer shortage? A lot of maintainers are getting burnout working 12 to 18 hour shifts plus weekends, six days a week. So what do you think a good solution would be? Hire more. Hire more, shorter shifts. And honestly, I think in the Air Force, moving maintenance back underneath ops and having it one big happy family, hear me out. That's the way the Navy does it. And that's the way the Air Force used to do it. I think it works better. Because when you put a pilot in charge of maintenance, that pilot suddenly understands if he's good. I mean, if he gives a shit, right? If he cares about his people. He suddenly understands what maintenance is going through, and he understands the limitations. So then he can turn around and translate that to the squadron commander and say, hey, here, and it's not this fighting anymore, right? Because, you know, right now you've got maintenance squadron commander, maintenance ops group commander, fighter squadron commander, fighter group commander, and they butt heads because they don't really understand each other's sides. But if you're in one big tent with a pilot in charge, now the pilot understands, I think it works a little bit better personally but i mean the answer to your question is just to hire more let's see what else uh i trust fiochi yeah i do too i mean for for target practice i obviously don't use it in a duty weapon have you considered teaching at a flight school no Can't wait for you being on Joe Rogan. Would you do it? Sure. I don't think they're going to invite me, but I'd do it. I wouldn't like, you know, Elon Musk and Toke Up or anything, but I'd do it. Oh, the long-term health effects of being a fighter pilot. Is cancer one of them? Yes. There have been instances of cancer due to radiation. Uh, for sure, you're going to have neck problems, maybe back problems, neck and back problems from pulling Gs. I mean, I know very few fighter pilots that don't have it as they get older. Um... Those are really the big ones. Looking forward to ruining Top Gun 2. I've just given up on Top Gun 2. If it happens, great. If not, that's fine too. Weaver, have you heard of or been to Target Ship for sorties in Chesapeake Bay? Uh, I have not. I mean, I'm familiar with that, but I have not. Cheetos prepare you for combat. Not to nickpick Fiocchi. Oh, Fiocchi. Fiocchi. Okay. Yeah, petition for mover to be the SpaceX Starship. I don't want to be the. I'll just be a. 
Uh, they won't hire me, though. I don't have a engineering degree or a technical degree or anything like that. I'm just a normal fighter dude. Can you describe what breathing O2 is like on a pressure demand system? It's really not. Unless you go 100% or you're under the PVG, pressure breathing under G, it's just breathing normally. Um, sounds different when you're 100% oxygen. Makes your ears pop the next day. That's really the only thing. Is the reserve deputy a paid position per shift or volunteer? I do not get paid. Not a single dollar. It's all volunteer. Do you have a bug out plan as New Orleans is certainly on the list first volley? I'm about 35 miles from New Orleans, like air distance. So I um, think I'm okay. But, I mean, obviously best place to go is north or northwest. Have you ever been to Europe? Sort of. I, we stopped in Shannon, Ireland, and Germany uh, on the way to and from uh, deployment, but I've never actually stayed there. So my wife saw you for the first time yesterday. I'm in trouble. Are you sure you don't mean gonky? Because gonky usually has a way with the ladies. Does it matter which version of the book I get? Ebook, you're talking about profit margins? Ebook, for sure. I don't hardly make anything on paperback. 350,000 this stream, go! Yeah, that'd be cool. Probably lost a few. Doug Masters went from sim to real jet without a problem, destroyed the Lytan Air Force, so I'm sure a DCS player would manage just fine. I stand corrected. You're right. Have you ever seen the Dutch Apache demo team? No, that sounds awesome. Which do you think is a better attack chopper between the Apache and the Cobra? The Apache. For sure. Gotta love YouTube comments. I love YouTube comments. They're the best. Which would you choose? The Horn of the Viper in a traditional VR dogfight? Man, I don't know. VR? I don't know. Uh, still flying for the airlines? I'm on a leave of absence. I'm still employed by the airlines. I'm just on a leave of absence. Mover, I can help you get a new C8 if you're still interested with no markup. How should I get a hold of you? C.W. Lemoyne at C.W. Lemoyne. Ah. C.W. Lemoyne at C.W. Lemoyne.com. Email me. I'll take you up on that. Anna Tahoe. And a Z06. Which one of the F-16 blocks most capable in your opinion? Probably the, yeah, probably the new 70s. Whatever the new ones are. Ironically, when I wrote Spectre Rising, I made up a Block 69, which turned out to be what the 70s are now. I call them the Titanium Vi Viper. I uh, enjoyed the Switch stream last night, keeping them up. Yeah, you know, if you guys like them, we'll keep doing them. I've, I've actually been playing DCS with Doug. I just haven't streamed it. But if it works, we'll do it. More money, God, I hate we get paid the same as honors. I guess I missed what that's related to. Um, my dad had to teach that to new pilots when he was an NCO IC with the 71st when he was still in the Air Force. Navy court method way better. As you said, one big tent, O level and I level. Yeah, I, I, I just think it works better, having seen it both ways. Dos Gringo said they don't give an F if they bring the jetpack code 2 or code 3. That's true. That's true. But you know what, though? You think that early on in your career, but... I was always proud of having a good relationship with maintenance, and I, because my dad was a an army maintenance officer, he didn't work on airplanes, he worked on vehicles. But I guess that instilled in me, because um, he was a warrant officer, uh, it instilled in me a respect for it, people that turn wrenches, and I think it helps. I think being able to earn the respect of the people, because they'll hook you up, they will hook you up if you if they like you, you know, they'll they'll make sure you're taken care of, and that when I'm getting in an aircraft that makes me feel good that, to know that you know they care now i'm sure i've aggravated some and pissed some off or whatever and if you're watching and i did that i apologize but as i progressed in my career i definitely learned that lesson and tried to be as cool as possible uh around maintenance because you saw in my video you know when i left the navy i thought that was one of the coolest moments in my career where they knew it was my finny flight and they all lined up and saluted it's giving me chills just thinking about it right now. They all lined up and saluted 
as I taxied out for the last time in the Hornet. So, uh, anyway, have you ever played any racing sims? I racing, yes, and NASCAR Heat four and three I used to play, uh, but I racing, yes. I used to have a racing league on iRacing, Mover Ruins Racing. I just haven't done it in a while. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, what was your favorite munition to drop in training for either aircraft? Uh, rockets. And on my, my Finney flight in the Viper, I got to shoot rockets and shoot all 500, was it 50 rounds of the gun? 20 mic mic. I thought that was awesome. Would you fly drones now? I'm, it might be a possibility. I wouldn't do it. What do you think? Get more annoyed by Ace Combat questions, questions about the F-14 coming back, or questions comparing two dissimilar platforms. I think it's when people ask me stuff that I have no qualifications whatsoever. They're like, you know, what do you think about this country versus this country? And it's like, they're great. Thanks. Best stations to be placed as a fighter pilot is Hawaii one of them, or is that Navy? Uh, Hawaii has Raptors. That's the guard. Best places, I think Hill. I loved Hill. I mean, I never was stationed there, but I visited a lot, and everybody I know who's been there loves Hill. I think Hill's a great place. Um, you know, I, I, I think it just depends on which fighter. Uh, people love Mountain Home, Boise, all real nice areas. Uh, it just depends on what you want. Uh, what jet did you deploy with, the F-16, uh, to Operation Iraqi Freedom? Swing by the McDill Air Show. I'll buy you a Coke. Okay. I'll take you up on that. Thought of making a brand new series, Mover Ruins Anime, reacting to animes like Gate, Helicopter Attack, and F-4 Recon. Boy, anime is tough. It's a lot of reading. It's like Narcos. I end up reading the whole thing. Love the channel. When's the next book? What software do you use for stream? So, next book? Don't know. Haven't been writing. Uh, I need to. Software or StreamYard? You're a fan of the Saints? I used to be. A, like, I grew up as a fan of the Saints. 2015, 20, no, so 2017, 2018, I kind of drifted off. Um, last year, I kind of tried again. Sean Payton's gone. It really just depends on what they do next year. Um, I was not a whole fan. You know, I know this is going to piss people off, but... When Drew Brees did all the woke stuff, it's funny because somebody was calling me an SJW earlier, but when he put Jacob Blake and all the stuff that guy's done on his helmet, that was kind of a slap in the face. And I wasn't a huge fan of that and of what they were doing. But, you know, I, I'm a forgive and forget kind of guy because I do enjoy football and I do enjoy watching, but it just depends on what Dennis Allen can do this year. Try not to get political. Sorry. Do you have any tips to the F5C? I don't know. Like, you're going to buy one in real life? I'll fly it for you if you want. Uh, will you play VTOL VR? I have not. Who's the best fighter pilot you ever met? Me. <laughs> Gonky. Bombat. Spoiler alert. What are we spoiling? Mover. I'm a freshman in high school and want to be a pilot in the Air Force. Fighter pilot, preferably. What do you think is the ideal route to go for? Uh, that's a good place to start. Uh, don't forget about ROTC and don't forget about the Guard Reserve option. You know, I, whichever way gets you a commission and gets you a pilot slot. Oh, VR meant visual range. Is the question about Viper Hornet dogfight? Well, I never lost to a Hornet. I fought the Viper against the Hornet a lot in the Viper. And I never lost. Not even once. Not even close. I never got to fight the Viper with a Hornet, but I did get to fight an Eagle with a Hornet, and I did well with the Hornet against the Eagle, but not with the Viper against the Eagle. So by the transitive property, the answer to your question is I don't know. So um, I, it just depends. You know, it depends. I like the Hornet because it was easy to be good because you didn't have to pull a lot of Gs. The Viper, you had to be on your game. Physically, mentally, you had to be on your game. You still have to do your one week and a month for the reserves, even without a pilot slot? Currently, I can't at all. I can't do anything until I find another job. So if I don't find another job by October, I will not have a good year, and that's going to suck. Uh, can I have a link to the Twitch? Uh, 
twitch.tv slash mover, M-O-V-E-R-C-W-L. I guess I could put it up on a banner. Hold on. Twitch.tv slash mover, C-W-L. And uh, I know you don't forget to follow me on Instagram and um, Twitter at CWL, CWL1. Any more T38 videos you can put out? would love to see more. Yes, I'm going to all those are going to come out as soon as I find a job. I'm kind of letting the dust settle a little bit. When you wrote Finny Flight, how did you research flanker stuff? Gonky helped me out with that, believe it or not, because Gonky has friends, you know, that have flown it. So that was kind of the biggest one. Um, yeah. Love the content you ever simulated with Smokey Sams? Uh, yes. There are other ways for SAM evasion training. Simulators, there's some other stuff we can do. Uh, you can go to ranges, too. You can go to the range. So I'm really far behind right now, so... You guys are just talking about warrant officers, which is when I was talking about my dad. How many fighter pilot incidents have you seen going through the pipeline? I, what is it? Define a fighter pilot incident. If a pilot really manhandled a bird, can he make up and help out with repairs or is compensation only in liquid form? Usually they don't want you turning wrenches because they don't trust you because you're probably not good at it. But definitely buying, um, definitely buy cases and or some level of alcohol. I'm the voiceover actor for the A10C and the P51 D and DCS with my sim. Oh, that's cool. Good for you. Final salute sounds so cool. It was. It meant a lot to me. You have beer or hard liquor? Neither. I don't drink. What Russian fighter would you fly if you ever got a chance? Uh, the flanker. Or the MiG-29. What was your feelings towards the weapons flight? I appreciate what they do. It's nice to have bombs and bullets. Did you hear that Justin Timberlake is going to fight in Ukraine? He's going to be stationed along the Crimea River. <laughs> oh, man. I'd love to see a video series from you flying a P-51. Me too. Me too, man. Me too. Do the Jolly Rogers still exist? Yes. In fact, I interviewed Jolly Pilot. In fact, I met Jolly Pilot in real life, finally, at Heli Expo. He was there with his uh, beautiful wife. Why don't you just watch dubbed anime? I don't know. What I found was not dubbed. Nice. Would you willing to do any iRacing footage as well? I'm not sure if the audience would be big, but sounds like it'd be entertaining to watch. Yeah, I, I, I used to stream it on Twitch. Um, yeah. See what we got. Oh, we've been an hour. We need to wrap this up, but I'm going to try to get caught up here. If there's anything I've learned by watching why. Nope, nope. I miss DCS with you and Raymond. Love it when he attempts to do Christopher Walken's impersonation. Yeah, he we're, he's going to be with us tonight. Which best miniseries ever made, Band of Brothers or The Pacific? Man, I don't know. Um... I like the Pacific. John Bernthal was good in that. And I like John Bernthal. He's a really good actor. Um, yeah. When you're a fighter pilot in the Navy, do you live on the ship or do you live on the coast? And if you're on the ship, how long do you stay? Uh, you live on the ship. When you're on the sea tour, you go with the boat. The only time you, people live on the coast are the C2s. Can I use that uh, by the transitive property? The answer to your question is, I don't know. Yeah, please do. Put it on a shirt. I don't care. Eating G's in the corner. <laughs> Need to move away from domestic junk. Look into the Sequoia. Uh, is that going to be impossible to get to? Will Gonky ever upload again? You're going to have to ask his screaming four-year-old or three-year-old. That's his biggest limb fact. Oh, here we go. One thing I've learned from watching your videos, your clear advocation for SGW is an SGW accessory. And <laughs> accessories. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, I don't know what an HJU26 is, but that sounds awesome. How much, if any, has your YouTube channel affected your prospects finding a pilot slot in a new unit? Probably a lot. Probably a lot. But then writing the books had already, like, I had a real hostile interview to go fly E10s one time, and the guys straight up had a, they thought I was writing autobiographies, first off, which was wrong. Second, he thought I needed permission from the people that I wrote in the book 
to write, which was wrong because it was fiction. And second, and third, he said perception is reality. So it became kind of a big deal. I don't know. Long run, I don't know. We're gonna enjoy your interview with Andre. It's really inspiring. Andre is an amazing person. Uh, it was an honor, really, to interview him and uh, working with Saab. They were just great. I mean, I I would love to do more with them. You know, I think it'd be cool. Um, cause I mean, I really like what they're doing and I like Andre. He's a cool guy. Skid checking in. We're about to wrap up skid. How does your OPR work look being guard reserve? Does it get impacted by an absence? Like you're talking about at this point in my career, I don't even care about OPRs anymore. It just copy and paste from the last one. I have no desire for command or Oh six really not even Oh five. But I might, you know, because I haven't done PME yet, but I might. Like, I'm just here to fly and serve my country and be a good dude. That's it. Like, that's all I want. I don't have, like, because I'm just not, I'm not the, the, the type that wants to go do all the other stuff. You know, I just want to fly and have um, a good, good career flying. That's it. How fancy is your name in the fancy scale? Cornwallis Wilbur is very fancy. Uh, have you checked out Jaber and F-22 slots? F-22 for sure is not in my feet. I'm too old. I mean, no one's going to hire me for that. They're going to say I'm too old. I'm uh, talking about secret stuff. How do you know what not to talk about or feel comfortable to go deeper into? What happens if you make a mistake? Um, well, well, cause I know, cause I was a security manager for a really long time. Um, but second, you're talking about my videos in general. Uh, I usually run them by several active people before they go live just to make sure you know I, I to do that i mean if you make a mistake you can delete it remove it um you know it just depends it depends on how big the mistake is i mean obviously you don't want to get you know i'll never get into like weapons ranges and stuff like that but if you make a mistake you know fix it would you do the mass sing or no i don't sing don't sing don't dance now you've flown the Hornet. What is your opinion on the Super Hornet? I think it's great. Super Hornet's an awesome aircraft. I'd go to combat with it. What do you use when you play DCS? Well, I've got the Reverb G2. I've got the Puma uh, Pro Flight Trainer. Um, what time are you planning to stream? Uh, 8.30 Eastern, if, if it works out. Sometimes it's plus or minus, but if we do that, it'll, it'll be around there. Let's see. Let me try to get caught up here. Keep it up. Well, thanks, Greg. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep on keeping on. Do you agree that F-35 is the Ronda Rousey of the Flying Ladies? No, she's the Fat Amy of the Flying Ladies. Uh, let's see. How much does your lack of excitement over the F-35 affect your Air Force job opportunities? Not at all. No, that, that whole community is... It's so it's so far behind on TX courses, and you know it's just they we want current qualified guys. It, it wouldn't matter. Thanks, Nick. Don't sing, don't dance. Nope. Oh look, we finally uh, yeah, finally made it to the end. Is it safe to say that Ukraine situation is an ISR treasure trove for us? Yeah, yeah, we're learning a lot. I'm pretty sure. Uh, do you go to Oshkosh this year? I don't know. Am I? I don't have plans to, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. It depends on what I'm doing. So I talked about it in my other update video. I've got a job interview tomorrow. And if that happens, then I'll have about four months over that time period where I won't be able to do anything. So, uh, so, so yeah, I saw that. The missiles landed 20 kilometers from the place where the 101st Airborne Soldiers are located. Things can escalate quick, quickly. And there was a thing in uh, Iraq, too. Weaver, is it realistic to assume that the U.S., China, or other countries fighting each other will have total air dominance and destruction of the enemy? Uh, I, I, I don't know. You know, you just don't know. We didn't know. We didn't expect what's happening in Ukraine. So it's hard to really say what will actually happen until it actually starts, you know, kicks off. Would you be interested in a career in Embraer E-Jets? Um, no, career, no. Well, would I fly one? Yes. But I'm at, like, if 
I want to be the dude that owns the e-jet, not the dude that flies the people that owns. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got goals. Have you ever considered to buy your own affordable fighter jet? If so, which one would you choose? L-39? L-39 just... I've flown the L-39. I've got 10 hours in it. It's not that exciting. I don't know what I would buy. Can you say anything about the job interview? No. Not until it goes one way or the other. Don't want to... Don't want to jinx. I've probably already said too much. Since when is 345000 affordable? Well, then it's $1,000 an hour, too. So. Hornet pulls lots of AOA, has lots of thrust. Isn't some Hornet would, pilots would like? Yeah, I think it is a good balance. Like, the A model is a good balance of the Hornet and the Viper. But it's still fat Amy. Is Russia taking it slow not to review? I don't know what Russia is doing. Like, whether it's pure incompetence or something else is going on. I just don't know. I meant the airliner jets. Oh, no. No. No, I've already got an airline job. So, no. Like, I would not go back to the regionals. Or go to the regionals. Absolutely not. Stop by Warbirds. That'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. Uh, before you go, nuggets or chicken strips? You know, that's, that's probably the most important, important thing of this stream here. So Popeye's, Popeye's has started. Popeye's is the best chicken, by the way. Popeye's has started, um, Popeye's has started, Popeye's has started doing chicken nuggets. And I would assume they're good because Popeye's makes really good chicken. However, every time I go to order, I always get chicken strips. It's what I know. It's what I like. So chicken strips. However, comma, if I ever had to get chicken nuggets, it would be Popeye's chicken nuggets. You can fly the MiG-29 in the U.S. There's a train company in Quincy, Illinois. Yep, I was trying to get my buddy Bloke to get me a ride in the old MiG-29, but we haven't gotten that worked out yet. The Lord's chicken. <laughs> I do eat the Lord's chicken, too, at, at, at uh, Chick-fil-A. But... See, somebody says Popeye's nuggets are bad. Well, their chicken strips are good. The chicken strips, the french fries, and the biscuit. And I've heard the mac and cheese is good, too. But my quandary is I didn't want to replace anything because I like the fries and I like the, the biscuit. So what do you replace with the mac and cheese? You have to order extra, I guess. How much does your petrol cost? I paid $494, $495 yesterday for the uh, ZR1. COVID depending, ever been keen to come along to the Warbirds over Wanaka display here in New Zealand? Until the airline stuff and COVID goes away, I'm not doing any kind of airline travel, but maybe eventually. Oh, thank you, Memology. The Lord's Waffle Fries, that's true. Are you going to sell the ZR1? I'm saying that like a Brit now. ZR1 and try to get a Z06? No. My ultimate goal, if, if we can make this work, is get rid of the Durango Hellcat and get like a Tahoe or something, right? And then get a C8 convertible or a ZL11LE. And then when the Z8, C8 Z06 comes in, trade that in for the Z06 and then have the Z06 and the Z01. I can't get rid of the Z01. Z01 is staying forever because it's, it's too awesome. Do you advise against doing DCS content creation as someone who hopes to be a fighter pilot one day? I advise against any kind of content creation and any kind of social media if you're trying to be a fighter pilot. Like, I think it's best just to lay low, not have, not be searchable, not have anything they can use against you, personally. But that's just me. Do you train on the T-45? No, I've never flown T-45. I was an Air Force training guy. Uh, red beans and rice as a side? No, no, come on, man. No, no. Is it true that Russian pilots are not trained well to perform multitask missions? I heard that they have air in 60 to 100 hours a year. I got news for you. That's all we get to now. We're not. Mover, your mailbag pods can put sleep a whole nation. I uh, use your cast for sleeping my kids. My wife sends best greets from the bedroom for you now. Wonder what she's got in her mind, but thanks. All right. Well, that means it's time to quit. Pizza Company's the best. Pizza Hut, for sure.
Would you fly corporate? No. Let's see what else? Anybody else got me anything? Thanks, kid. Appreciate the appreciate the luck. I say that with the utmost respect, but Durango is really fugly. Yeah. I got no argument there. It's good at some angles. Love your videos in the comments on the maintenance people. I've worked in maintenance for uh, 35 years. I appreciate it. You know, I mean, you don't go anywhere if, without good maintenance. And it's nice to be able to trust that the jet's flyable and going to get you home. Uh, Mover's opinion on food is wrong. Mover's never wrong. And if I am, I'll tell you. And then I won't be wrong about that either. Uh, what is the highest altitude you've flown? Like 50-something thousand feet? 51, 50, something like that. Uh, let's see. No one out pizzas the hut. Pizza hut. As an Italian, I'm insulted. Well, I mean, like local. You know, there's local stuff that's better. Sbarro's. Remember Sbarro's in the, in the mall? That used to be the best. Uh, I, no, I don't want to go to the Coast Guard. Seven hundred plus watching, only two hundred ninety-six. Come on by, hit the like. Well, I, I think I think it's time to shut it down too. I've got a final question for you though. If I got a job that was not like if my next military flying job is not flying fighters, would you guys still like me? Real question. Would you still consider me a fighter pilot if I'm not flying fighters in the military? That is the question. Uh. 50 cal having flown at 50k is it true the earth is flat now the earth is not flat so adaptive cruise control is where the thing has a radar on it and it automatically senses that there's a car in front of you and then matches the speed so it doesn't like you don't have to click off the cruise control which i think is awesome it's just a great feature uh, how how old are, how old are you now 39 i turned 39 last month Oh man! Oh wow, a lot of a lot of people. Oh, we gotta know. All right. Going to space? No, I wish I was going to space. We'd still like you just a little less. <laughs> After the Pizza Hut comments, it's questionable. <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh, I'm not going to the back seat. No, no, I'm not going to the back seat. No, no. It's so just a different direction, that's all. Will you ever go Tesla? I might. You know, I've looked at them. It's just I can't like they're not there's not enough room for the dogs. That's the only thing I got. Admit it, you just want an SUV with a radar. I mean, I just Cruise control is nice to have it, you know, automatically follow the car in front of you and not have to worry about it. It's also, it stops on its own, too. I'll be FedEx in my book. I will not work for FedEx. What's the best piece of advice for someone who wants to be a fighter pilot? Make them tell you no. So don't self-eliminate. Don't eliminate yourself. Let somebody who's in a position of authority be the one to do that if they're going to do it at all. Uh, and second, don't be a douche. Help your bros. Be good to others and help others through the program. Best pizza topping pepperoni. Duh. Cruise control does not come with Twiz, no. Track while lie. Do I see myself going back to the airlines? Uh, it depends. I mean, it's a jink and assess kind of thing. You know, I'm on a leave of absence. When that time comes, I'll assess what's the market doing. I have a feeling, a bad feeling about the state of the airline industry. I think it's going to be tough. If oil keeps going the way it is, I think you're going to start to see furloughs in a recession. I just, I don't see how that's ever avoidable. Can't see flying C-17, C-5s, KC-10s, AWACS, or anything big, really, so to speak. Hit up Jack, but it's I don't think it's eggplant shaped. I think it's something else. Only if you buy us all chicken. Oh, I'm not. No, I, I was. That was just a joke. Um, or curiosity, more than anything. 
Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. A SpaceX pilot for delivery pizza. I will say, though, here's the you guys can go back and search. The aircraft that I'm interviewing for, I mentioned in this stream one time. Do you like country music? Sometimes <laughs> the only actually the first concert I ever went to was a Jason Aldean concert. Check I was dating really liked it. I liked it, too. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything else. You guys started question. Uh, be good to others is just a good rule for life. Yeah, it's the don't be a douche thing. I mean, really. Your videos with interviews are really great. Will you have something in the future coming? I don't have any scheduled, but that doesn't mean there aren't any planned. The typhoon's awesome. I'd love to fly it. What do I think about stadium flyovers? I go go Google it. I did a video about doing flyovers. It's great. Uh, do jets have air conditioned cockpits? Yes, yes they do. Some work better than others though. Airwolf. Yep, that's it. It's Airwolf. How awesome would that be? Living your eighties dreams, right? Chips, Airwolf. Ghostbusters, A-Team, Tank. Any chance to fly the hog? I think that window is steadily closing, as much as I hate to say that, because I would love to go fly A-10. I mean, that was the first aircraft I was hired to go fly, except Hurricane Katrina ruined that for me. You drive up to Airwolf's lair and kit. Boy, wouldn't that be cool. All right. Uh, I think we're, we've... Can you apply for that? I don't even know what a WB-57 is. I don't know. I'm just hoping one day, like, Elon's watching, and he, he's not mad about me making fun of his drones, and he's like, Mover, you can fly for us. We need you to go to the moon, and I would do that. Thoughts on the Little Bird? Uh, I enjoyed flying the OH-6, which is pretty close. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Batman. All day long, Batman. I've been a Batman fan. Batman. Anyway. Okay. Let's, uh, let's shut her down here. It's been great. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy the Heli Expo video tomorrow, the Plat Labor, Palette, Palette, Labor, Palette, whatever that is. Uh, and then whatever else we'll do, we'll do another mover mailbag like Friday or something Thursday. So I like doing the live mover mailbags. Oh, do you want to send me something? Mover mailbag at cwm1.com. If you want it read on the channel, uh, if you want to mail me something, PO box eight, five, nine, four Mandeville, Louisiana, seven Oh four, seven zero. Uh, let me put that up there. PO box eight, five, nine, four Mandeville, nine, seven, four, seven, zero. Add banner. I need a producer. There you go. If you want to mail me something, just email me. Let me know so I know to go to the uh, post office and check it out. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a great week. Happy Sunday. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.